Well, it's finally time for another GIMP tutorial, and in this video, we'll be learning how to make animations in GIMP where the colors of part of an image appear to be changing, like the iris of this eye right here. Or here's another example where some of the lights on this Christmas tree appear to be blinking different colors. And then there's this glowy neon text which appears to be pulsating different colors like this. This effect can also be used with um, gradients in GIMP to make some neat images such as this circular design which appears to be spinning uh, in two different directions actually um, but in fact it's really just the colors that are changing. And here's another design which appears to be snaking around the text um, but in fact it's not actually moving it's just the colors that are changing. So in order to make these animations we'll be using a script that I actually wrote myself. So um, You'll need to download this to do the tutorial. It, it, you can actually create these animations without the script, but I think it makes it a lot easier. So um, to download the script, you'll need to go to this DeviantArt page on my account. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And this preview, again, just shows an example of what you can do with the script. But to actually download it, you'll need to come over here to the right side and click Download File, which should pop up a little window like this. And you'll want to save this zip file on your computer and then you'll unzip it and um, inside will it will have a GIMP script file which will be a .scm file um, and you'll want to save that into your GIMP scripts folder in order to use it uh, hopefully if you've watched some of my other tutorials you already know how to do that by now but if not I'll go ahead and remind you how to do that real quick so if you're not sure where to put your GIMP scripts you can just go into GIMP and choose edit preferences and then over here on the left side, choose folders and then scripts. Or if you're um, trying to install brushes or gradients or anything else, you can choose the other options there. But we're doing a script, so we'll click on scripts. And then over here on the left side, well, you'll have a list of all the file locations on your computer where GIMP will automatically look for your scripts. So usually um, one of them should be something just like your username, GIMP 2.6 scripts depending on which operating system you're using but you can put it in any of these file locations so just navigate to one of those places on your computer and open that folder and put your GIMP put the script that you just downloaded into that folder and then when you restart GIMP um, it should work automatically so in order to use a script we need to have an image to work with first so let's um, show how to make that eye color changing animation that I demonstrated earlier um, to do that you want to go to if you want to use the same image that I used you want to go to Wikipedia and just search, search for eye color and then scroll down and this is the picture that I used in that animation so if you want to use the same image just right click and choose copy image and go back to GIMP and choose control V to paste it or you could go to edit paste and I'm going to scale this down a little bit just to make it the image fit into our window a little bit more nicely okay so the first step we need to do now that we have our image is to select only the portion of the image that we want to affect so in this case we want to select the iris since that's the only part of the image that we want to change the colors of. We, we, don't, we don't want to change the colors of, like, for example, the skin around the outside. So we're going to get our Ellipse Select tool and use that to s select the iris, which in this case, for this image, is fairly simple because the iris is not being covered at all by any of the eyelid. But if you're using a different eyeball image where maybe the top portion of the iris is being obscured a little bit because the eyelid is overlapping it and what you can do is just first click inside the selection once you've um, selected the sort of circular outline of the iris and then change the mode of your ellipse select tool to intersect and then you want to make another elliptical selection like this and you want the top curve of this ellipse to follow the outline of however your eyelid is and then that will um, cut out the extra part of your iris which is being obscured by the eyelid but in this case we don't need that um, since that's not happening in this picture one last thing we can do though is to get rid of the pupil since we don't really want to change the color of the pupil even though it's pretty much black anyway so it won't really change much um, but we can change the mode of our selection tool again to subtract 
and then simply draw a little circular selection around the pupil to subtract away that part from our selection and then just click inside when you're done. So now we have a selection which is only covering the iris of the eyeball. But if you notice, the edges of the iris are actually a little bit blurry, so we're going to feather the selection in order to make um, the, the changes of the color that we do later uh, blend in a little more nicely with the image. So just go to Select Feather, and I think you can just leave it at the default value of 5. Okay, finally, now that we have the part of our image selected that we want to change, we can go to Filters, Animation, color cycle. So this is the script that I wrote and if you have uh, followed the directions earlier and installed it it should appear right here in your menu. So just choose that and you get a little window that pops up. You might have to click this to bring it, bring it to the front of all your other GIMP windows. Um, and you can see here we just have one thing we can choose which is how many frames that we want in our animation. So the default value is 8. I'll just leave it there but the important thing to note is that you want to always use an even number of frames. So if you choose use these little up and down arrows they will always give you an even number but you can if you really wanted to you could change it to an odd number but if you do that the script won't work. So you want to leave it as an even number. Um, in this case we'll just use the default value of 8. So that just takes a couple seconds to run, and GIMP spits out um, a new image. So we had our old image up here still, and we have a new image, which now has all these different layers. Each layer represents a frame in our animation. And, and you can see in the little previews, in each frame, the color of the eye is slightly changed. And when we play them all in a sequence, it appears as though the um, color of the iris is morphing between the, around the entire spectrum of colors. So, <clears throat> to see what this animation actually looks like, we can go to Filters, Animation, Playback. And GIMP will give us a little window where we can preview the animation by playing all of the uh, frames in sequence. And there we go. We have an animation of an eyeball where the iris is changing colors. So if you want to save this as an animation, you can just close that, uh, that playback window. And then you want to just simply go to File, Save As, Choose a location on your computer, and then um, type whatever you call whatever you want the image to be, and make sure to choose .gif for the file extension if you want to save it as an animation. And then you'll just click save, and you want to choose to save the image as an animation, and then just click export, and you might get one more window I think. And yeah, and then just click save. So that's one example of using this script to change the color of an iris on a photo. You can use a similar technique to um, change the the lights on a Christmas tree or the um, glowing text that I showed earlier. Um, let's do another, one more example of using this script. So I'm going to close this image. We're done with that. Where this time we'll make that um, sort of spinning circular design. So this is an image that we'll make from scratch instead of using a photo. So we'll go to File, New, and make a new image. I'm going to make it a perfect square. I think 300 by 300 pixels will work nicely. Okay, so to make our circle, what we're going to do first is press Control-A to select all. That selects the entire canvas. And then if we have our Ellipse Select tool still selected, we should probably go ahead and change this mode back to um, replace the current selection. That's the standard mode that it always starts with. And now just click inside the selection and you'll see we get these control handles for the ellipse select tool. Now if we click in one of the corners of this of this control handle right here, start dragging down and then press control and shift at the same time, you can see now that we get a perfectly circular selection which will always stay centered in our canvas. So you can just, dra I'm just going to drag this a little bit away from the edge of the canvas like that and then release the mouse button and then control and shift and we have a perfectly circular selection centered in the canvas which is slightly away from the boundary of the canvas. So we can just click inside that to finalize our circular selection and now we want to fill this with a uh, gradient to create the design. So we're going to choose our gradient tool also known as the blend tool and then we want to choose the for the gradient we want to choose full saturation spectrum and you can see there's actually two of them here they go in opposite directions 
it says over here one is counterclockwise and one is clockwise um, so you can pick either one of those and then oh, also you want to change the shape to conical and I'm going to use asymmetrical but you could try symmetrical if you want I think they should both work and you want to click at about the middle of your canvas and drag in any direction that you want it really doesn't matter so we get this sort of like we're looking down on the tip of a cone but basically a circular circular gradient so next we're gonna get our lip select tool again um, and make sure again make sure this mode is still set to replace the current selection and then simply click inside the selection to bring back our control handles and then do the same thing by dragging and holding control and shift to uh, shrink this circular selection a little bit like that and then release the button so we have a smaller circular selection you can go ahead and click inside your selection once again to finalize that and we're going to get our bucket fill tool and make sure this is set to fill whole selection and your foreground color should be black so click in there to fill the selection with black and then get your lip select tool again click inside the selection shrink it the same way we did before finalize that selection get your gradient tool again and this time change the gradient to the other one of the full saturation spectrum gradients so if you use the first one like I did now choose the second one or if you use the second one last time now choose the first one and this is what gives us gives it the, the appearance of the, the inside and the outside traveling in different directions in the animation so again we're just going to click about the middle of our canvas and drag in really any direction it doesn't matter um, and then lastly we're going to shrink our selection one more time doing the same thing that we've been doing and this time we're just going to press the delete key to get rid of that part um, or you could also go to edit clear or even use your bucket fill tool to fill it in with white and then we can just click outside of our selection we're done with that now so our selection goes away or you could go to select none so this gives us our circular design the base image that we're working with and now we just need to run the script so we go to filters animation color cycle again I'll just use the default value of 8 but you could experiment with using higher number of frames or smaller number of frames it's up to you click OK wait a couple seconds for it to turn and burn and then here we go we have our animation you can see we have the frames where the colors are slightly different between each frame and if we go to filters animation playback we can preview our animation and see that indeed the inside and outside of this animation appear to be traveling in different directions again that entire illusion of motion just comes from the fact that the colors are changing so you could go ahead and save this the same way we did with the eyeball and you would have a nice animated gif just like we did with that and uh, i think that's all we have time for in this video so thanks for watching one thing I wanted to mention is uh, I was kind of curious if any of you, any of my viewers, uh, were interested in a tutorial for how to write your own scripts in GIMP. So um, it would be it would probably have to be something in several parts. It would be sort of long probably and maybe a little boring to some of you. But I was just curious if anybody was interested in that. So feel free to post in the comments if, if you would like to see that. If nobody wants to, then we won't do that. Um, hopefully it won't be so long before my next tutorial but I am getting ready to start school up again next week so who knows when I'll get around to doing this again um, but yeah thanks for watching guys uh, I hope you learned something I hope you enjoy this tutorial and uh, see you next time